Hey, good morning, everyone. It is uh, April 6, 2020, and uh, most likely if you're watching this, you're probably um, feeling the effects of, uh, of COVID-19 and lockdown, self-quarantine, um, stay-at-home uh, directives from your governor. Uh, I live in Washington, so we've been dealing with this for a while. So a lot of the other states that as this the spread is gravitating east and south, a lot of other states are feeling the impacts that, that Washington felt initially and early on. And so um, the things that we've just been uh, faced with were, you know, shortages and toilet paper and um, children's Tylenol. And now the new thing is... Um, the uh, hand, san not hand, hand sanitizers, one, Lysol, cleaning uh, chemicals, and uh, now the big one is rubbing alcohol, which you can use to make hand sanitizer. Um, so haven't faced with that, haven't heard about that one or encountered that one yet, but it's uh, uh, apparently it's, 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 da it's doing harm to people that need it, such uh, people that are uh, type 2, type 1 diabetics. Um, but... Anyway, I have been working from home for going on, this is probably about the third week, two and a half weeks, and um, it's been off and on, uh, been, it's, been, it's provided a lot of time for me to, to focus on school, and so this semester has been quite challenging as um, they had to add a class to fit everyone in there because the class that I was signed up for um, had a had an immersion class which required you to go to to the campus and so the campus is being closed so they don't have that ability now so now I had to take another class that was needed for my program and it just so happened to be the most intense reading intense involvement uh, class in the entire program basically it's you know number one it's the hardest class to take and and we also had to fit an eight an eight week course into seven. So it is, it's tough. This one has been tough and it's, uh, it's communication, um, and leadership ethics, um, for through Gonzaga. Um, actually the class is called communication and leadership ethics. Uh, and so I'm going to be taking just a self an assessment to kind of describe what it is. So it's called the Schwartz PB, uh, PBQ self assessment and reading through 40 questions of a description of a person, you have to state whether this is not like me at all, uh, not like me, a little like me, somewhat like me, like me, or very much like me to describe uh, this description. So number one, thinking up new ideas and being creative is important to you. You like to do things in your own original way. And I say this is sort of like me, you know, I can take, um, you know, uh, my job allows my career my service provides me the ability to, to uh, you know, I work in HR, so we do have to go by policy, but at the same time, doing certain things, you can put a little creative uh, uh, thing into it, like improving things, making it more aesthetically pleasing, changing words and things like that. So I'm, I'm able to kind of do things in my own way. It helps me kind of get that buy-in that's, you know, to own, to own it sort of thing. So I put down like me. Uh, it's not very much like me, but... I do like to have a sense of doing things on my own and making it mine because that means that um, when I do something, I own it and that it feels like I have a sense of responsibility to complete it. And if it goes wrong and goes it goes awry, then I own up to it. I, I assume responsibility for that. So that's why I give it um, like me. So that's a five out of six. It is important to me to be rich. You want to have a lot of money and expensive things. Uh, I have never really required or necessitated money or financial gain. It has just naturally, I mean, I, and I've gone through a very difficult time after the 2008, um, uh, you know, a recession that we had, I graduated from UW, uh, University of Washington right after that. And my first job was making pretty much nothing. So whatever you're living on right now and you're struggling, um, I was probably making a lot less than that. Uh, my salary was seventeen thousand um, dollars, and that's a full that's a salary. That means I took my work home. I worked in the evenings. Now, granted, I didn't have kids and a family to support and a mortgage and all that, but um, I did have 
very little money and uh, no medical insurance and it was a difficult time uh, for me. So I learned how to live on uh, very little money. So money has never really been important to me, but um, for this uh, assessment, I'm going to say that it's yeah, it's a little like me. It's nice to have money to, you know, to not have to say, well, I can get this or this. Either it's a necessity or something that we kind of need. I don't need to prioritize a lot of things. I also don't, uh, I'm not the kind of person to need um, big, fancy, shiny things. I'm not the kind of person that I have a car, it's paid off, I own it, it's a nice car, you know, It's but it's not something that, you know, It's it, granted, it's also like six years old, but it's paid for, you know, and I take care of it, but I don't shine it up and make it fancy and all that, all these fancy gadgets and stuff. I have a lot of, um, like I have a lot of things in my office and in my life that I use because I use it so much. You know, I have a lot of screens for doing work and things like that because I like to have uh, areas to reference. I like to have, you know, uh, the paper that I'm reading off of um, versus the assignment and what the papers need and then what I'm typing on. And I also need to have, I like to have screens for reference, you know, to looking up words, to looking up phrases, to finding out uh, what definitions fit certain things. And so it's nice. I have a lot of screens. But that's only because for me to do a certain job, I use a lot of detail and I use a, I, I go into a lot of depth about a lot of different things. And so that's one of the things. So for, for money, um, I like, also I've liked to, uh, to travel, um, you know, flying a few times a year has been something I've been uh, really enjoying and it is for family primarily. And I also do one to, to two trainings a year out of state, but growing up, I, ha I didn't take my first flight until I was... 12 years old. Um, I've never flown with my mom, uh, even when she up until when she passed. I never flew on a plane with my mother and my father. I didn't fly on a, on a plane with him until we had a death in the family. And that wasn't, wasn't until I was 21. And so uh, flying was uh, uh, something we never did. We drove a lot. And so money is not, it's not very important to me, but getting to the point where I like to, um, you know, looking into homes and things like that. I like to, I, the idea of having, you know, like a little bit of property getting separated from, you know, uh, those those houses that get built right next to each other where you can, you have maybe like six feet in between each home and you can look out the window and see, you know, someone else in their own house. I like to have a little bit of property. Um, and I like to retire uh, fairly early and not have to work through my 60s. But so money to me, it's a little like me. So that's three out of six. You think that it's important that every person in the world be treated equally. You believe that everyone should have equal opportunities in life. And I put that as a six. I think that's very much like me. I think that everyone needs to have equal opportunities uh, to succeed and be happy in life. I don't think that people should have restrictions necessarily. I think that uh, when you're born, everyone should be treated equally. But I think also that through things that you choose to do, if that violates um, certain codes, in your life, then yeah, some things you're going to lose those rights. So, but I think that from a birth, everyone should be treated equally and given the equal opportunities in life. Number four, it is very important uh, to you to show your abilities. You want people to admire what you do. Uh, I put down a little like me. I'm not the kind of person that needs attention. I don't necessarily like attention. I don't mind doing something and other people getting credit for it. Uh, I do define myself as a servant leader. And so I don't believe that I need to have people know that it's me um, doing a great job and seeing it succeed. I have no problem passing that, that, that uh, recognition onto someone else and saying, you know, it was them or even saying that it was the team. So I don't necessarily require people to admire what I do. That's okay. So I put down a little like me. So that's three out of six. It is important to you to live in a secure surroundings to uh, you avoid anything that might endanger your safety. And I put down not like me. And that's the and that's the point that, you know, I like to mountaineer. I like to I bungee. I haven't bungee jumped, but I have jumped out of a plane. I don't necessarily need to have, you know, rich neighborhoods or, you know, I have lived growing up. I was very poor and um, we lived in areas that uh, I wouldn't want to raise my child in or my children in, or my family in, and so I'm used to it. 
Uh, but at the same time, it's like, I don't necessarily need safety all the time. I like the fact that, you know, once in a while you have to be challenged and the fact that you have to, you know, uh, take in your surroundings and understand that where you are is not necessarily safe all the time. Because I think when that happens, you, um, you lose track of the fact that, you know, life is not safety all the time. You know, I don't want to be raised, raise my children in, in a bubble you know, surrounded by plastic wrap and bubble wrap and things like that. I want, I want life to be difficult and I, I don't want to be living in safety all the time. I think that is important to subject yourself to difficult situations once in a while. So I put that down as a two out of six, not like me. Uh, you believe, or you think that it is important to do things, um, wait, you think it is important to to do a lot of different things in life. You always look for new things to try. And I put down that's very much, that's like me. Not very much, but it's uh, five out of six. I like to try new things. You believe that people should do what they're told. You think people should follow rules at all times, even when no one is watching. I believe that that is a definition of character. I think that doing the right thing is, it's different. You know, it's it differs from person to person, from state to state, country to country. Uh, I believe that uh, people do what they do um, based upon the kind of person that they are. So you believe that people should do what they're told. Um, I believe that you can't just tell someone you can't do this because of this. I think you need to explain to them uh, um, why, you know, why we don't break the law. It's because of this. You know, you give them the why and then internally they should be able to make that decision based upon hearing that why so i don't believe that people should do what they're told i think that people should be told the right thing to do and then explain to them why and then they make their own decisions um, and i believe that people should be giving um uh and this is not going to apply to everybody because not everyone was given the right upbringing and that some people it's black and white for some people for some people there is a sense of gray um you know, so I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. So I think that you believe that people should do what they're told. Um, I'm going to put a little like me. I don't necessarily believe that that's, um, that I believe that if people were given the right upbringing, um, to understand that, you know, you shouldn't harm other people and hurt other people and that these are the things that you should do because of this, then I think that provides, um, enough, um, evidence and proof for why people should act in, in a moral and ethical behavior. So I believe that, I don't believe that everyone should do that as they're told. I think that you need to question things. I think that it's important to understand, you know, um, just throughout history, people have defied what they were told that they needed to do. And, you know, uh, countries and histories changed because of that. So um, I don't believe that you should do as you're told, but I think you should be told and explain to why you should do certain things and then give them the reason why and the impact that it would have versus not doing it. Um, it is important to listen to people who are different from yourself. Even when you disagree with them, you want to understand them. That is very much like me. I love hearing uh, how people are different and why. You know, uh, I don't believe that, um, you know, there's always a little nugget of truth in everything. You think it's a number nine. You think it's important not to ask for more than what you have. You believe that people should be satisfied with what they have. I think, especially in this, uh, you know, cor uh, quarantine, co uh, COVID-19 type of a situation that, um, by the way, this is Mio. It's not, I'm not day drinking. It's just Mio. Um, you squirt it into your cups of uh, water. So you think it's important not to ask for more than what you have. I think that it's okay to have more than what you need. I mean, we're finding out during COVID-19 that there are things that we definitely need. I don't understand the toilet paper thing. I think that's more of a cultural thing. I think that's more of an American uh, thing that, you know, where other countries, they use buckets, they use water, they use bidets. I think in America, we have a fear of getting our hands dirty. Uh, but I think that... Um, there are some things in life that we, we, that we need. And I think that it's, uh, you know, the things people are buying a lot of beans, a lot of pastas, um, a lot of, uh, foods that can go a long way. Hunters now have these freezers full of food that they can use. And, um, I think that we've taken grocery stores for granted. Um, but I think that, 
Um, you believe that people should be satisfied with what they have. Um, I believe that's like me. I believe that people should, you know, appreciate your family, appreciate the clothes that you have. You know, you don't need too many clothes. You know, I do have a, an abundance of things like hiking and trail running and outdoor stuff and books and uh, things like that. But it's also to prepare for situations like this. You know, when this came about, you know, COVID-19 stay at home, I have water filtration. I have backup. I have solar chargers. I have emergency, you know, external portable chargers and things like that for my, my devices and things. And so I'm prepared for stuff like this. You, I think that you need to be satisfied with what you have and that asking for too much is not necessarily wrong. But I think that times like this, you understand that, um, you know, uh, you really appreciate the things that you do have. Uh, I also think that the people out there that there are some people that are, you know, I'm bored, I'm sick and tired of being at home, you know, they are the same people that will uh, complain about their jobs and their circumstances. And they have this opportunity right now, you're, you're, you're in your homes, do something that you grow, put do something that helps you learn and, and advance yourself, learn a new language, learn, learn how to code, you know, I'm learning my classes, and I'm also taking um, the great courses. Uh, I subscribe to their to their plus package where you can watch all these lectures. I watch a few lectures every day on a number of subjects like philosophy, political science, um, and what was the other one? It was uh, I forget what it was, but what it was, but it was like I'm taking notes and things and learning stuff, and I'm constantly putting things in my head. So I think you should appreciate the things that you have. I don't believe that. Um, not to ask for more than you have, appreciate what you do have, because when it's taken away, you really feel it. Number 10, you seek every chance you can to have fun. It is important for you to do things that give yourself pleasure. Um, I think that's somewhat like me. I believe that's like four out of six. I believe that you should do things that give you pleasure, but I also think that you need to, that, um, when pleasure, when it's done too often, you become addicted to it um, and that you need to understand that there are certain times in, in your life where it's going to suck and you have to embrace that and understand that life itself is not going to be this constant pleasure filled thing. And that's how people get into addicted situations. So I believe that um, you should need to seek pleasure. I think I'm, I'm going to go a little lower than that. I don't think you need to enjoy things. Um, and so I'm going to put down a little like me. You should seek pleasure once in a while, but it shouldn't be a constant. You know, it should be a reward. Like I do a reading, I finish a book, I reward myself with, I do nonfiction and then sort of a, an enjoyable self-help book or a fiction or some sort. So you, you balance it out. Everything's about balance. All right. So number 11, it is important to you to make your own decisions about what to, about what you do. You'd like to be free to plan and choose your own activities for yourself. I would say that that's like me. I like the sense of freedom. Um, you know, I'm going to do this because of this. Uh, so that's number 11. I believe that it is important to you to make decisions about what to do with your own life. That's free will. Um, you should be able to plan your own, your own activities. But I also think that you're not always going to be the leader in every situation. And sometimes you need to allow other people to make the decisions and have input into those things. And so um, um, choosing your own activities go ahead, but also at the same time, you should, it's important to be part of a team and give in a little bit and allow other people to make decisions. It's number 12. It is important to you to help uh, the people around yourself. Um, you want to, uh, you want to care for their well being. I think that the, that is uh, important. I think you should help other people because not helping them is in giving up. I'm not okay. So I'm not a big fan of giving people money. I believe if you're doing a skill like playing drums uh, doing magic tricks or doing something entertaining of entertaining value. Yeah, that deserves money. But somebody simply holding a sign and begging, I think that that is a sign of, of, of a huge problem. And people do it with the right intentions. They give them money, but at the same time, doing that just in, uh, encourages behavior that people can get something for nothing. I think that um, it's important to care and help other people, but at the same time, you need to help them become more self-sufficient. Uh, number 13, being very successful is important to you. Uh, you like to impress other people. Uh, it's a little like me. I mean, I, I do enjoy the fact that, um, like right now, I have a job that um, is necessary. Um, and then I do work from home. And I'm able to ha to do that and not, you know, um, economic downturn 
don't really affect me. But at the same time, I've gone through a time when that did affect me. And I was very, very, like after I got out of college, I was very grateful to have a job doing what I love and living in, you know, a mountain area in Montana, making $17,000 a year. I was very happy with that. So being successful is not, I don't, I don't like impressing other people. I could care less. Number 14, it is very important to you uh, that your country be safe. You think that um, you think the state must be on watch against threats which, uh, from within and without. Mm, I think it's important to take care of people that share. See, being an American to me, it's not just waving a flag and thinking that everything that we do is great and, and we can't do wrong. I think America has been wrong on in a lot of ways. And I think it's important to be critical of your own decisions and your own family decisions, your parents' decisions, your country's decisions, your state's decisions. Um, I don't think that, you know, anyone is right or wrong 100% of the time. But I think it's important to watch other people in America. I think we have a lot of shared values. So um, so it's important to, like after 9-11, I went down and I tried to donate blood. The line was way too long. I went down to the recruiter's office to talk about possible military careers. I was ready to give up everything for, you know, the sake of the country. And so it's, um, you know, being an American, I think that uh, it's also... Uh, I'm not going to get too much into it, but uh, the treatment of indigenous peoples is uh, is very, is very, I'm passionate about that. And so, um, you know, the country as it is right now, COVID-19, I think it is important to be on the watch in the future. This hopefully fixes the states and the, the federal government to to anticipate what George W. Bush said in 2005, that, you know, these, these viruses and these uh, pandemics are going to happen and we need to be prepared for it. So I think that it's important to be on the watch against threats, but not to be completely just, you know, um, you think that everybody's out to get you all the time. Um, so I think that the states must be on watch against threats from within and without um, someone like me. 15, you like to take risks. You are always looking out for adventures. That's like me, five out of six. 16. It is important to you always to behave properly. Um, you want to avoid doing anything people would say is wrong. When people say things are wrong, you have to you have to dig a little bit deeper than that. Why are they saying it's wrong? And um, what is the history of that being wrong up to that point? So I think that it's always, you need to behave ethically, not properly. I think it's it's important to you to behave properly. Don't, you know, treat people with respect. Don't cause them physical, emotional, or psychological harm and allow people to make decisions and learn from it. But I, I also think that there are certain things that are throughout every single culture that you just don't do. Um, and uh, so I don't think that you want to avoid to do anything people would say is wrong. I don't have a problem doing things that people think is wrong because those are the people that change history. So out of... One to six, it is important to you to always behave properly. I would say that that is a little like me. Um, I think that there's enough things that you could to do all the time that is proper and is ethical um, and moral in society. Uh, but at the same time, um, sometimes people saying things are wrong. Sometimes what is seen by, by other people as wrong is wrong, at least to me. 17, it is important to you uh, to be in charge and tell others what to do. You want people to do what you say. Um, I think that to be in charge, I think, has to be earned. I think that if you're going to tell somebody to take out the garbage, that you it is not above you to do that and show that by uh, demonstration. So it is not important to me to be in charge. It's not like me. Uh, I think that being in charge... Uh, comes through uh, doing the right thing, um, helping other people, and then when you turn around and you need help doing something, people are there right with you and, and they don't question it. So it's important uh, to be in charge. I don't think it is. It's not like me. Um, it's not important for me to be in charge, but my actions will get people to follow me. That's the difference. Uh, number 18 is important to you to be loyal uh, to your friends. Uh, you want to devote yourself to people close to you. I... I think that's like me. So five out of six, I think it's loyalty is a big thing, but I think that 
under the right circumstances. I think that, you know, being loyal to your friends um, because you expect, you give what you expect. Um, you need to help those, um, you know, because as you get older, your group of friends gets smaller and smaller because you have less time. But I also think that it's important if the, if, if the situation calls for you to drop everything and help them out and to be loyal, then you do it. But at the same time, um, you're not always going to agree with the reasons why they need your help. And sometimes you need to allow them to not to not do something. Um, being loyal sometimes is not helping them out because it's a learning opportunity for them. You know. Um, number 19, you, you, be, you strongly believe that people should care for nature. Looking after the environment is important to you. I believe that the environment is extremely important to me um, for a number of reasons. For the outdoors, for the fact that it's the only planet that we get and that... Um, I believe in harmony and balance in the world and making decisions that affect, you know, future generations to enjoy the things that we have today, I think is important to secure that and continue it on for future generations. So I believe that people should care for nature very much. I believe that a lot of people um, get that confused and um, for their own benefit, you know, they say that businesses are doing the right thing when we see time and time again the businesses act unethically in spite of what you know caring for the environment and people have to suffer for it number 20 religious belief is important to you uh you try hard to do what your re religion requires this is a difficult one for me i have struggled with the belief in a higher power for a long time i believe that there is a higher power i believe that there is a creator i don't know i don't believe that there is a right or wrong um, religion or belief. I believe that religious belief is important to me. I, religious belief is not important to me. I believe that everyone should do what they feel is right. And, and whether that's country, city, town, household, faith, I think, I think a religious freedom is important to me. Um, I believe everyone should have the right to practice and enjoy and uh, discuss their own freedoms and their own religions and their own religious qualities and beliefs. I have no problem listening to other faiths. I believe, you know, um, if you disagree with a certain faith, you should have spoken to that person and gotten to understand what it is about that religion and explain why. You don't just hate religions because you hate religions because you've heard something or you believe something or that you read something that makes you hate them. Or dislike with them. I think you should disagree with them based upon discussions and dialogue with other di other people in different faiths and come to your own conclusions that way. But don't hate. Um, so religious belief is, Im is not important to me. Um, I believe that everyone's religion requires them to do different things. But I believe that people should have the right and ability to do that regardless of what their faith is. Um... It is important, number 21, it is important to you that things be organized and clean. You really do like things, you do not like things to be a mess. Uh, it's a little like me. My wife would disagree and say that you're a, you're a mess and chaotic, but that's, that's who I am. Um, like I say, I have my own organization. Um, there's a pile of papers. I can tell you where everything is. It's not going to be organized to most people, so it's not user-friendly uh, from an outside perspective, but for me it functions for me. And so, um, being messy is not, I don't take that as a, I take offense to that. You think it's a, number 22. You think it's important to be interested in things. Uh, you like to be curious very much like me. I love to learn about a number of things. And if, if a lot of people dislike something, you know, after nine 11, there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, uh, disregard and, or just hatred towards Eastern religions like, uh, Islam. And so what did I do as I started? I majored in Middle Eastern politics and uh, political science and took a few quarters of Arabic just to understand things. You know, I, I didn't convert, but I believe that I'm very, I want to learn as much as I can about a, a, a number of things. I'm a lifelong learner and I love putting myself in difficult situations to find more out about myself and find out where I am. And so uh, I love learning things. 23, you believe... All the world's people should live in harmony. Uh, promoting peace among all groups in the world is important to you. I believe that people should have the... 
See that when, when, when you do that, when you promote peace to all people, you start becoming the world's police officers. And I'm not, because that means you're pushing your own ethics and morals onto other people, which might be different than you. I believe that the world's people should live in harmony. I Promoting peace, um, I think it's somewhat important. Uh, so four out of six, I guess. I believe that promoting world peace is something that, I think that if something is strong enough and is, and is good enough, will happen and will catch on. And I, I don't think you have to force things on other people. I think that if peace works for all people, um, you know, the people that are pushing world peace onto other countries are doing things that are um, not consistent with that. And so other countries may see hip hypocrisy in that. But I believe that people should live in harmony. I believe that that should be a goal. I don't believe that everyone should. I believe that harmony and peace and balance in the world should be a goal that we're always striving for. And it's never a end goal. An end goal, you can't reach that. It's something that we should all strive for. 24. Uh, you think it's important to be ambitious. You, sh you want to show how capable you are. That's like me. So five out of six. I think it's important to show ambition and that you want to get things done and not just sit around all day. 25. You think, uh, you think it is best to do things in traditional ways. It is important uh, to keep up the customs you have learned. So uh, there is a book um, written by a gentleman named uh, Taiki Alfred. It's called Peace Power, Peace, Power, and Righteousness. And in this book, he talks about, so I am a uh, enrolled Chickasaw nation out of Oklahoma, originally out of Tennessee. And um, I believe that uh, tribal uh, traditions are important. So I do believe in traditions are important. However, there is a section in that book that talks about adding to the longhouse. And so... The longhouse is something we have, which is our traditions and our cultures, but I think that you should also be expanding. So you're buying a home that is tradition. Your home is your traditional upbringing. And that as we get older, we add to it. You don't just uproot and go into a new house necessarily. It's you have something and you add on to it. Um, having, you still have the traditional beliefs in there, but you're adding on to it. So you're growing and, and um, incorporating traditional beliefs into future beliefs and to things that you learn because if you don't um you know you uh you you can't grow without you have to have something to build off of but at the same time you can't remain in that area you need to grow and add to it um so it's important to do things in traditional ways uh it's important to keep up the customs you have learned i think it's um I don't know if it's somewhat or somewhat like me or like me. So four out of six or five out of six. I think it's important to understand traditional ways, but I also think that to move forward, you have to understand um, that things change and that you should be able to change with it or you become a thing of the past. You know, look at uh, vinyl records and CDs. Um, you have to be able to learn and adapt. So I think it's important to do things in traditional ways. I think that it's, I think it's somewhat like me. I think you have to have a, a grasp of traditional ways in order to move forward and you can't let those go you have to build on top of them 26 enjoying life's pleasures is important to you you would like to spoil yourself i think that's like me i don't think you should spoil yourself often you know the people that you know you have a new package from amazon on your porch every single day um i know that my wife and i go through phases where that does happen but for a lot of things i have books delivered to the door and i have like vitamins or other things like that that are added. I don't, it's not like a consistent thing for me. Um, so I think that um, it's... An, uh, so I don't think it's important to spoil... It's, it, you need to spoil yourself once in a while. Uh, but it shouldn't be a consistent thing. It is important to you to respond to the needs of others. You try to support those you need. I think that that's... Um, I, think once, I think that's like me. So if someone needs something... You don't give it to them necessarily. You teach them how to acquire it on their own. So it's the whole argument between giving them a fish and teaching them how to fish. I think that is important. So um, you want to support other people, but at the same time, that's it's different. I don't know if I agree with the wording on that. Um, you have to pay attention to words like always and um, 
definites, like the needs of others, people's needs are different, you know. Um, someone who is disabled needs care. Um, people that, you know, you can't just treat other people consistent. Everyone is different. So everyone's, everyone's situation is different. So I'm going to put down somewhat like me. I think that it's important to help other people and support them. But I think that support is different. You can't just give. You have to help develop. 28, you believe that you should always show respect uh, to your parents and older people is important to be obedient. I, that is a little like me. And I say that because, you know, we, we should respect senior citizens and elders. Um, I don't believe that elders, uh, at least in the traditional um, indigenous Native American belief that all elders demand respect. I think you should respect all people. But I also think that um, that elders... Let me see here. I think that elders uh, need to do things in order to demand respect or to, uh, to, uh, to, um, to have people's opinions or to have people respect them. I think that it's, and also your parents, um, some people were just, you know, my parents, the older I got, the more I realized that they were wrong in a lot of ways. And I try to do things differently. Um, you should not always show, res you should, re Okay, so you know what? You should respect them, but I think it's also important to understand them that you do that with the understanding that they're not always right. That sometimes you will learn things in your own life that prove them wrong and make them, and that they did things wrong. Um, but I think it's, you need to show respect to every, every person. So I'm going to put that somewhat like me. I believe that you should not, that there are some people out there that are just generally bad, you know, um, and that you should always treat them with respect. You should treat everyone with respect. But I think that a lot of people have made decisions in their life that um, to, that you can't just respect every single person because they are of, of a certain age. I think that a certain age um, does not dictate whether or not someone automatically demands respect. I think that's done through character. And I think that's consistent decisions throughout your life that make you a person that is deserving of that respect and obedience. 29, you want... Everyone to be treated justly, even people you don't know. It is important to you to protect the weak in society. Uh, I believe that's like me. I th also think that people are weak because they have chosen that way. I think that, you know, um, people that need, um, you know, like not everyone in a wheelchair uh, faced a difficult situation. Uh, I believe that you can't jump to conclusions. Sometimes people that are in wheelchairs made poor health decisions in life. They smoked, they drank, and they ate horrible foods and now they have diabetes and they, you know, and their lifestyle choices have contributed to them being in this position of always needing care and ongoing need and, and consistent care. Um, but I think that people that are weak in society are the people that have not been shown the right way or that are unable to do that for themselves. I believe that people are capable of much more than what they lead other people on to believe. Um, and I think that with guidance and instruction and, and assistance that people can learn how to become more self-sufficient. I believe that people that claim to be that they aren't self-sufficient or, or that they are unable to provide for themselves have not challenged themselves and pushed themselves. So I believe that it's important to care for the weak. And by defining the word weak, the weak are the ones that have not been shown the right way or have not been in a situation where they need to test themselves. I think that the weak are those people. I think that people that have just, you know, made decisions to go the path of least resistance and to not challenge themselves and to just, you know, eat the same foods and drink alcohol and smoke and do drugs and all that stuff. And now they're in a position that now they're considered weak. I believe that their decisions influence their, uh, their, the status quo and that, you know, um, we do have an obligation to help them out, but at the same time, I think that you need to understand that your decisions um, contribute to, you know, the future of your, you know, your well-being and everything like that. So weak, I think, is, uh, is it, there's a difference in between weak um, in society. There's different kind of weak. You like surprises, number 30. Um, you like surprises, is it important to you to have an exciting life? Uh Somewhat like me. I think it's important to have surprises once in a while, but then again, it's like always rewarding yourself or spoiling yourself. You should have an exciting life too. You know, an exciting life for me is walking on a trail. So, 
it's not necessarily the surprise. It's just enjoying your life. 31. You try hard to avoid getting sick. Staying healthy is very important to you. That is, I'd say, like me. Not very much like me. I think it's, you know what? Health is very important to me. So it's, um, I wear, you know, I wear the N95 masks in public. I also work out and I eat healthy. I drink a lot of water. So yeah, I make good decisions because staying healthy is important. Getting ahead in life is important to you. You strive to do better than others. It's not a competition to me. So getting ahead in life is important to me because it's growth as a person. I don't do it in a competitive way. So getting ahead in life is important because I want to be better than I was yesterday. So getting ahead is that to me. It's not striving to do better than others. So that is not like me. Forgiving people who have hurt you is important to you. You, uh, number 33, you try to see what is good in them and try not to hold a grudge. Uh, I believe that is like me. Um, I believe that people make mistakes and they can learn from them. But if they don't, um, you don't hold a grudge, but you do always keep that in the back of your mind that this kind of person is this way because of what they've shown and this is their character. It is important to you to be independent. You like to rely on yourself. That is very much like me. I'm very, but also almost to a fault. I believe that being independent, sometimes you need help and you need to be able to be comfortable asking for help. So being important, it's important to be independent and to rely on yourself, but at the same time, you should also understand that you cannot do everything and that sometimes you will need to ask for help. 35, having a stable government is important to you. You are concerned that the social order be protected, especially in this time. I think that's like me, but I think that a stable government, if it's unstable, it's probably a reason why. And I think that a lot of people that are involved in politics these days and government, it's a lot of knee-jerk reactions and a lack of patience. And uh, I think if a, gov if a government... So if a government falls, everything else falls apart and we have chaos. And um, in that kind of a situation, we have sort of like the zombie apocalypse sand zombies, zombies. And so I think it's important to have some balance and order for governments and things like that. So it is like me. But at the same time, I think that governments need to understand that, you know, they're not, they're not always going to be around. They're not always going to be needed in that they need to do what the people demand of them or expect from them in order to remain in that position. 36, it is important to you to be polite to other people all the time. And you try to never disturb or irritate others. You should always be polite to people, but at the same time, sometimes people just don't listen and you have to change the tone in which you deliver it. Um, I don't believe that just being nice and courteous all the time is the best way. I believe there's some sort of military um, leader instilled in me that not everyone's going to listen to you and sometimes to get them to not see things from your see things from your direction is the most important thing i think that sometimes you need to you need sometimes you need to irritate people and disturb them because you're there's a life lesson that needs to be taught to them not necessarily you need to do what i'm doing or do what i'm saying you need to pay attention and, and, and pay attention to what's happening in order to learn a lesson and i think sometimes you need to disturb and irritate people so that's not it's somewhat like me. I think that you need to disturb and irritate people at, at times. 37, you really want to enjoy life. Having a good time is important to you. Um, I think that that's somewhat like me. Uh, life is a struggle. You can't always have fun. And if you're, if you're always having fun, difficult situations happen and you don't know how to function. So I don't think that's... I need. It's important for me to enjoy life. You definitely need to laugh and relax and have a good time. But at the same time, you need to get down and get dirty and do the hard work. 38 is important to be humble and modest. Uh, you do not draw attention to yourself. That is very much like me. I'm very humble. Um, I don't like attention necessarily. So that's very much like me. Number 39, you always, you always want uh, to be the one who makes the decisions. You like to be a leader. Um, I like being a leader in the fat and under the context that I'm doing the right thing and that people follow me because I have earned it. Um, I don't, um, I don't want people to look at me because I am in a title position of a leader. I like to be in that position where people come to me because they respect me based upon my character and the decisions that I've made and the things that I've done. Um, I don't want to be a leader 
out of title, I want to be a leader out of character. And so to answer this, you always want to be the one who makes the decisions. Um, you like to be the leader, somewhat like me. It is important to you to adapt to nature and to fit into it. You believe that people should not change nature. Uh, I believe that people need to adapt. Uh, I think we need to be adaptable as much as possible. Uh, but I believe that sometimes we need to change nature to fit uh, to certain things. But at the same time, you need to think about the future generations. And so um, we need to learn how to adapt to nature. But I don't necessarily think that it's that nature needs to be completely hand our hands need to remain off of nature. I think that we can still maintain nature into the future um, by doing things that change it a little bit, but not at the same time not eradicating what it was and that affect future generations. So I answered all 40 of these. Um, and so going to my results, I am universalism followed up by security. So my um, individual results, uh, number one is universalism. And so by definition, universalism is, let me see here. Universalism, uh, by definition, um, so that was uh, based upon the ethics, the uh, universalism, um, let me see here. Let's see what that, what they describe that as. They describe universalism as, um, philosophical and theological concept that some ideas have universal application or applicability. A belief in one fundamental truth is another important tenet. So I think that there are some concepts that are universal. So um, I think in a sense that, you know, we don't, um, you know, there's some things in America that you can't do, you can't do here, but you can do in other countries. But I think that there are some certain things that, um, you know, that are um, paramount throughout the country and throughout the world, actually. So universalism, that's interesting that that was the highest. So that out of 32 and the second highest is 20. And so um, interesting what those results are, but that's me filling out 40 questions and I've taken 47 minutes of your time. So, um, yeah, those are my results. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to comment. And, um, and, uh, if you would like to receive one of these, I can, uh, find a way to send it to you. So hope, hope everyone's staying safe and healthy during these times of COVID-19 and coronavirus. And, uh, I do would, I would like to encourage people to to think about how contagious this is, and even though you may not be showing signs of symptoms of it, that those are the people that are the ones that are spreading it the most. And so social distancing and remaining in your homes for the longest amount of time, yes, it's a sacrifice, but at the same time, um, not doing that and spreading this to the to vulnerable people puts our health systems in, in, in great difficult strains. And so ha not having enough ventilators uh, masks and hand sanitizers and gloves and things like that it puts a strain on our, on our on our health systems and so uh, it's important to stay indoors and to get out as get out when you can but at the same time understand that uh, that this is that the people that are spreading this uh, COVID-19 to other people are the ones that are completely healthy like me I could have it for all I know and be spreading it to other people I don't know so that's why I keep my circle small and I wear masks when I go out and I stay away from people as often as possible for, uh, for the time. And so uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again in the future. Thank you.